the Middle East. Joining me now in the foyer of the House, James Bazan, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Defence, Jack Harris, the NDP defence critic, and Mark Garneau, the Liberal Foreign Affairs critic. Uh, Mr. Bazan, the Prime Minister made several statements today, and, and watching them closely in question period, it seemed clear that um, the Prime Minister has decided there will be a combat mission and there will be a debate on this. Can you clarify? Is that when will the debate be? Well, no decision has been made yet, Evan. Um, you know, cabinet and the government uh, are still holding discussions uh, as we go look at the renewal of the mission, uh, whether or not we expand the mission, and whether we go from non-combat to combat. There's a lot of different uh, cards on the table, and uh, right now, every due consideration is being given to ensure that uh, we first and foremost confront. Uh, the terror which is ISIL, that we confront an organization that, that is threatening not only uh, civilians of the area, but our threat to us right here in Canada. But Mr. President, I, I, just to be clear, uh, I'm going to play you a clip of the Prime Minister and I want the audience to view this as well. It's quite clear to me, looking at this, that the Prime Minister has basically said there will be a combat mission and it will be debated on. Here's the clip. We cannot go out and start throwing around uh, timelines that we're not aware of. We simply have to examine what's in front of us, what we can do. We will come to the House of Commons with a proposal on that matter, Mr. Speaker, and I look forward to a debate and vote on that. Okay, Mr. Bazan, I'm quoting him. We will come to the House of Commons with a proposal, and I look forward to a debate. So the Prime Minister has now said he will come, so I guess the question is, it's clear to me from that that he's made a decision to come forward. When will that debate happen? I think you're trying to read into it too far, actually, Evan, because, you know, that, that could also mean that, that we just extend the existing mission and, and there's going to be ongoing debate, as we've seen in question period every day, on, on what Canada no, sir, is doing. Sir, to be fair, to be fair, I, I got to be, this is an important matter, and, and I'm taking I'm the, I'm, the, the, the Prime Minister's words matter here. We will come to the House of Commons with a proposal on the matter. I look forward to a debate and vote on that. He's saying they'll put it to the House, they'll debate it, and they'll vote. That's a combat mission. And That's pretty crystal clear to and me. And we've been clear that if it becomes a combat role, and the practice of our party has been, and it's unprecedented, that on combat roles we do bring it to, as a confidence motion to the House for debate and a vote. So uh, if it becomes something more substantive than what it is now, where uh, Canadian Armed Forces members are involved in a combat mission, then we will have that discussion. We've been very clear about but, that. But Mr. Bazan, look, we've just been through this whole Paul Calandra obfuscation issue and the tearful apology, trying to get some straight answers, and I, and I get it. The Prime Minister is saying, we'll, we're going to bring a proposal on the matter to the House. I look forward to a debate and a vote. Why is the government having so much trouble backing the Prime Minister who says, <clears throat> I look forward to doing it, here it is. Why are we obfuscating him? What about a straight answer? He's saying well, it. Why can't we but confirm it? The straight it? answer is, Evan, that, that the, the, the final decision hasn't been made. The proposal isn't coming forward yet. When that happens, <laughs> we'll bring it to, uh, to the House. But, but I, I can tell you that, that all options are being analyzed. The only option that we aren't going to do is sit idly by. And we're going to make sure that we are engaged and pulling mm. our, oh, our stop, fair share stop spinning, in. Stop spinning, it's not spinning Jake. At all. Nobody is talking about sitting idly by. Look, we said three weeks ago that there was going to be mission creep and that we wanted a debate and a vote three weeks ago. We wanted the cards on the table. Here we are reading tea leaves, for God's sake, about what, the, what this government is doing or not doing. And Evan, you're probably right in determining that there's already a, there's already a plan here. But what Canadians are concerned about, and we know that from what we're hearing, that, that they're concerned about being dragged into a quagmire uh, in Iraq uh, by this government who they don't really trust, frankly. And, you know, there's lots of reasons why not to trust them because of the kind of things you're saying. We're, we're expected to try and figure out what it is they're doing and react but, to something okay, but, that's but efficient. But, Mr. Harris, to your, and, and your leader asks a lot of reasonable questions. What's the objective? What's going to happen when there'll be a vote? All reasonable questions. Is it really reasonable to ask the Prime Minister to say how long this war is going to go? He asked, Mr. Mulcair said, when will this end? I mean, is that, a, is that even a serious question? How is the Prime Minister supposed to know when a conflict 
is going to end? Well, I'll tell you, Evan, that's the question that a lot of Canadians are asking themselves. If we go down this road, when will it likely end? We've spent 11 years in Afghanistan. The, uh, the Americans have already been 10 years uh, in Iraq. Uh, if, the, if we decide that this is something that Canada should be doing, uh, that's the question that Canadians have. But the, when, a fair, when, a fair when question will is what's end? the objective. Well, I, a fair question okay. is what's the metric of success. But to ask the Prime well, Minister you know, reasonably we, to predict an end date. We, we can quibble about pre whether it's being a prediction or a commitment or not. But I mean, really, what Canadians want to know, are we going to be dragged into this quagmire? That's the word that the Prime Minister himself used today. And the question really here is, what can Canadians usefully do? You know, we support, it's not a question, as James keeps trying to put it, as either doing a, an attack. You've you got to do both. You, you, you don't, can't, you you, can't you, do you, just you, one or the other. No, you no, have no, to you do, do both. It's not, it's not a choice between doing airstrikes or not doing nothing. There's lots of things that Canadians can do and lots of things that Canadians will support doing. I've got a list here of the 60 plus members of the coalition uh, and what these countries are doing. So Canada has a lot of options here, can perhaps even help save lives now instead of getting involved uh, in, in a major uh, uh, major attack and combat mission with no end and with no uh, no no. Mr. Garneau, I again, I'm trying to get. Uh, I'm just listening to what the prime minister's saying, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And I, uh, as far as I can tell, the prime minister said today we will come to the House of Commons with a proposal on the matter. I look forward to a debate on the vote on that. Do you read into this that there will be a debate and vote on combat mission in Iraq and or Syria? Yes, I do. I think it is crystal clear that in the coming days the government will put a motion before Parliament which will have the content of what is being proposed. I think there's an 80% chance that that will include CF-18s, and that will be debated, and then a vote will be taken. I think it's crystal clear that that is what is before us. Uh, we don't know exactly when, but it's coming. Okay, what, what would the Liberals do? Would the Liberals support sending CF-18s to Iraq and or Syria to join in a coalition in these strikes against ISIS? Depends what day. We are going to debate uh, in the caucus tomorrow uh, all of the possible scenarios that we think the government will bring forward and we'll decide how we view those. What is very, very important, though, is clarity on that motion that the government is going to and bring forward. what do you forward. want to see, though? Clarity will be, sort of, if, uh, let's assume the CF-18 option is the one the government will put forward, which I think is likely, will it only talk about Iraq or will it also talk about Syria? Will there be rules of engagement? Because ISIS is now realizing that if it goes out in the open, it's a sitting duck. So it's going to be much more stealthy from now on and stay closer to villages and, uh, and towns. And so there are rules of engagement involved with the fact that you could be dropping bombs. One of the things that we have to be concerned about at that point is collateral damage. Okay. So what will the rules of engagement be? Those kinds of things Those will we will need it. to know. The, I want to play another clip from the Prime Minister. It was a fascinating question period, Mr. Bazan, and I wonder if you could clarify for me. Uh, the Prime Minister raised the issue of ISIS pl directly planning an attack against Canada. Now, we have heard ISIS threaten Canada, and I spoke to the Prime Minister's office and Jason McDonald about this, and we all know the threat that ISIS has made against Canada, but this seemed more specific. Here's what the Prime Minister said. Planning security attacks on this country, Mr. Speaker, this is not acceptable. And the government will act, and will act with our allies to make sure those capacities are degraded in a way that they will not continue to be a threat to this country. So the, I'm just going to quote the Prime Minister. ISIS is planning security attacks against this country. Can you give us any information if there is a clear and present danger or a specific threat against Canada? Well, I, I can't talk about the things, national security. Oh, come. But at the same time, we have seen the videos. They've been played on TV, they're Crazy. posted on YouTube, and that ISIL is out there, and Canada is definitely one of the countries that they are threatening at this time. We know that there's Canadians that are there that are prepared to bring uh, their, that brand of terrorism back here at home. That's why we've taken uh, some very specific steps in revoking uh, passports and revoking citizenship on those that want to commit these illicit crimes. And, and we're seeing them participating now in general genocide, uh, what ISIL is carrying out on ethnic and religious minorities across the north, and we don't want to see that come here. Okay. So, so we've been very clear about this, and that's not what we're seeing coming from, from, from the okay, opposition Okay, but just, just I want to be clear, I because we're, we're talking about the Prime Minister's using 
this threat, obviously, as a justification, and it may be a reasonable one, I'm not judging the merits of it, to send Canada's men and women into combat. And, I, and so I just want to know, is there something more specific than the threat we heard on that videotape from ISIS where Canada was named? It's, the Prime Minister says they're planning security attacks against this country. Is there something more than that threat on the tape? Are they actually in the planning stages of an attack, and does Canada have information or intelligence on that? Not that I'm aware of, but I can tell you that, that we've already heard a lot of these threats. We've also seen other threats come forward against uh, other allies, uh, t threatening subway attacks in, in Paris and New York. So, right. you know, we have to be vigilant here. We have to take the proactive measures. Evan, 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 Evan I'm so going to cut the government. You've got to cut the government a little this bit is, of slack here. We're talking about extremely delicate security matters here. Uh, James can't come out and spill the beans and, and, well, and provide all sorts of details to spill. about these kinds of things. That is that beans. is part of the reality well, sorry, just here. Say, but Mr. Garneau, I, fair enough, and we're not asking for breaches of security, but when the Prime Minister stands up and says they are planning security attacks against the country, it is reasonable for Canadians to say, what exactly are we talking about? Yeah, here? but we, we expect our government. We expect our government not to come to us after some terrible thing happens in Canada no. and say we missed it. Sorry, we missed it. We yeah. will do better next time. That, they have to make some late. assumptions before that fact. And the fact that 130 Canadians have gone over to the uh, Middle East, into the area where ISIS is working. Not all ISIS. That, uh, well, all right, stop, so, and, stop other, the, and, other terror, and other and other terrorist groups, and you know, some of them have returned to Canada. We know about the process of radicalization. I think it's prudent for the government to take you know, some of these uh, fair measures. Fair enough, but, but the question is, if they're planning at security attacks, and this is a justification, should we ask reasonable questions about that? Mr. Harris, you seem to have reservations. Yeah, look, it, this has the hallmark of a bit of fear-mongering. We've got word from the United States, for example, that they, they say that there's no credible threat on the U.S. homeland. Uh, if the Prime Minister has something, James Bazan doesn't have it. He just said he doesn't have anything. You know, I've seen, I've, I saw a video of some guy uh, seven or eight minutes long on Vice. He looks like somebody, an individual who's out of it, frankly. Uh, he doesn't look like he could plan anything. Uh, that that it was all kinds of nonsense. If that's what we're talking about, this is pure fear mongering. I was at the uh, luncheon and, and, of Mr. And, you know, Johnson, let's, let's, the oh, Homeland no, let's, Security. Let's, uh, let's not let's not jump of, into a fear mongering here based on not fear well, 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 hang, hang on, hang on, I can't hear. But, but I Mr. Mr. Har Mr. Harris, let, let me just say, the the head of Homeland Security and Mr. Garno's right was here. I watched him today as well. He said there is a legitimate fear of ISIS. He's, the, the, this group who the NDP has yet to say you would support the combat mission against, control an area the size of the UK in Iraq and Syria. We see what they've done. I guess the question is, do you not think that they're a clear threat to Canada? Well, you know, the all of the all of the security information aside from individuals has been that their aim is in is in that area that they aim to get territory in that area uh, i haven't uh, i've not seen any suggestion of the state as a state so as an organization planning these kinds of attacks they're making outrageous statements but if there is evidence of a clear threat well clearly that has to be dealt with and i you know we fully expect uh, the canadian government uh, to act act on that in terms of security measures and be very and have a domestic program and a domestic response to that. we support all that we support okay. a response to to isil and the threat that's there we absolutely do that so you but know, do you question, support but you the, don't support the question, a combat response. the question is what Not is the all. best way that canadians can contribute to this coalition just as the other 60 co countries that are there we've got to consider that ourselves right. and see what we can do to help save Lots. Okay, Mr. Bazan, I'm going to give you one last, I got 10 seconds, one last chance. Will there be a debate about a combat mission this week? Uh, as for timelines, again, sorry, Evan, I'm not sure when we're going to come forward, but I can tell you that our, our, our clock is ticking um, on the 30 days since but, we deployed but to be in September fair, the 5th. There's got to, I mean, I just, I, I, I guess it's a little difficult. October 5th, the deadline's up. That means you, you're, you're, there's a chance you'd have a debate about continuing the mission after your missions up, it seems to me it's only reasonable to suggest, given what the Prime Minister said, this is the week. I just don't know why the government's being so difficult to get this out. It's not just difficult. a debate. It's just, it's just, we've got to make sure that, that when we come forward with a proposal, that it is something that, that we've well thought out, because 
you know, we are talking about a very serious uh, security threat and one we are looking at what our capabilities are and, and how we best integrate into uh, the, the alliance that right. has been formed by President Obama. Okay, I got to leave it there. Mr. Bazan, Mr. Harris, and Mr. Garneau, I, I, it's a very serious issue. I always appreciate the three of you coming on to debate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.